Albert's. That's our word. Brought to you by Root and Freedom. And uh, I'm here with Jeremy H. Uh, you're the perfect person to plug <laughs> where Room for Freedom is. So I'm going to let you do it and then say hi. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll start with by saying hi. But yes, Room for Freedom is the new website and app coming out from Mr. Ben Stone, the bad Quaker, which is set to essentially, hopefully, well, compete with and ideally replace Airbnb because it's ki- it kind of works like Airbnb, except it's a lot cooler because instead of uh, instead of you know being a middleman, it's basically just a connection spot. So there's no tracking of, of your information. The, the people at uh, Room for Freedom don't care whatsoever what you do with the person that you hook up with. We, we they don't want any of your information. And there's also a lot more options as far as payment because uh, they've hooked up with Roberts and Roberts and are going to have exchanges for pretty much any you know currency or money you can think of. Um, and you can also do barter and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're still working hard. I know the, the prototype should be just about ready and, nice. uh, we're very, uh, very excited about it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I forgot where I was going to go with that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a, um, um, yeah. I mean, like when it first came out, I was kind of like, okay, that's interesting. I thought this was just going to be another Airbnb competition straight out. And then it wasn't. Oh, that was it. Um, I'm also glad how they're not just invoking a blockchain right off the bat. Like that's what like all like the big anarchist apps are trying to do. It's like well, it's it's on the blockchain. It's like well, why is it on the blockchain? It's just because <laughs> it's on the blockchain. <laughs> like everything's got to be on the blockchain unnecessarily. I don't understand. Well, yeah, because. Well, because blockchain is just a buzzword in that sense. Yeah. That's all it is. <laughs> they don't really. Some of those people may not even understand the blockchain. They're just like, it's on there. If we use that word, people, libertarians and anarchists will flock to us. Yeah, VC money just pours in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's probably why they're so, yeah, VC money. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, so yeah, it's well, yes, the blockchain will be involved, but it's not. You know, that's not what that's not what Ben and, and the rest of those guys are hyping. Um, you know, it's just, you know, just privacy, security, privacy, security. That's the big thing. Yeah. Just making connections. And it's and and, you know, it, it, Ben's original idea was to have it be like a, a competitor to Airbnb, but it quickly, we quickly realized how much more this could do. You know, it's, you know, we've, I, I think actually we talked about it with Ben when I had him on the Seeds of Liberty. Um, and it's been talked about in a couple other avenues too, where it could be used for so many other things. It's, it's, it's literally just going to be a connection tool more than anything else yeah and you know a more secured c- connection tool than some of the other ones that are currently floating around so that's what we try to grab the attention of anarchists and libertarians with and anybody who's in you know kind of uh you know worried about security and stuff like that because yeah, so even, bas- even some normies are <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> I, I, so it's basically like originally not how it is now but originally how kind of like arcade city was supposed to be like a decentralized kind of thing that doesn't keep any information well, yeah that was on a blockchain and it's not really a, a competition to uber because uber like vets all their drivers and they have like, programs and they they vet all the cars and they offer different programs and stuff whereas this is just basically like hey if you want to drive someone around do whatever but arcade city turned out to be a giant scam but uh, <laughs> but yes yeah um so, so it was basically not really a competition to it. It was just supposed to be something slightly similar. So that, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. But yeah. Why, why does it, everything have to be on the damn blockchain? Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> but anyways, I think, we already did a show. Now, man. I think we already did a show about Room for Freedom. But yeah, I don't yes. know why. Every time that topic comes up, it still kind of fascinates me. So so what's been going on with you recently? I don't, when was the last time you were on the show? It's been a while, hasn't it? Or... Uh, well, actually, yeah, a few it hasn't weeks, been month. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Every, every, I think everybody else was busy. I don't know. Like a month ago, we did one. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Still, no word from Matt. I, when I, he I, was going to get on. <laughs> That's the one everybody's begging me about. Him and Bab. Those are the two everyone wants me to have on. So yeah, hmm. well, well, Matt's been gone for like months now, hasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't heard a show from him in forever. Well, he did do a, a <laughs> an RPG hangout. <laughs> He's really into RPGs. And he did like this, th- I, I don't know how long it was, it was probably three hours, that's how long his other ones are. Like three hour thing where he just does like 
Dungeons and Dragons on the internet over Google Hangout with his friends. Interesting. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was, if you're in RPGs. I was, I, was, I was being nice. See, it's funny. I, I never got into D&D, but I do, I do like RPGs as far as video games go, but I never did the whole D&D thing. That was just never... Yeah. Even though I was, like, back, at, back in those days, you know, it was still fairly popular in the mid to late 80s. And I was, I fit the prototype. I was that geeky, nerdy kid in a lot of ways. Just never got into it. Yeah, I never got into those I had friends two. that were. I didn't get into RPG video games either. Like, there was a couple that I really liked, but all the other ones I just sound, found so boring. Um, was, I think it was like Chrono Trigger, Shadowrun. Uh, I couldn't stand like the the, the Final Fantasy stuff. So, oh, yeah. see, see, now, now we're gonna have a problem, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> well, the, that well, that that was my in. That was my in because okay. Final Fantasy Final Fantasy Seven was when it came out was revolutionary back in ninety six, ninety seven, or whatever that was, and for the PlayStation One, and that's what I that was my first run at college, and I almost failed out. Because uh, that game was so it was so fucking great that I put I poured over three hundred hours into it and I became obsessed with that game, and uh, those games are fun. I don't know. That's 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 the type. Like if I'm gonna play a video game, I to this day I can still do that, which is why I try not to play them that often because I can still lose myself for like a week yeah. just sitting on the couch I'm not knocking, with a bottle of water. <laughs> I'm not knocking anybody and, uh, who plays RPG video games, but I am knocking people who play desktop, tabletop RPGs and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> for I, sure. And it's oh, only for comedic oh. value. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, everybody's got to have a hobby, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, a lot of good stuff has come out of it. Um, Stranger Things. I don't know. Yeah, Stranger Things probably was a product of, of Dungeons and Dragons, people playing Dungeons and Dragons. Same with Adventure Time, which is an awesome show uh, that would not exist without Dungeons and Dragons. I think I think how they actually write the show is they, they play Dungeons and Dragons and then they remember storylines from when they were playing and then they put them in the show. So that hmm. that's kind of an interesting way of, of writing a show, but... That show is awesome. I've not, yeah, I've never even heard. I've never even heard of that one. Stranger Things. I still haven't watched yet. It's in. It's on my list. Wow. Of things I just... Wow. Get on my level, fam. <laughs> you well, haven't seen listen, the media I've seen. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I, I didn't even ha- I didn't even have access to Netflix for the longest time because I refused to pay for it again because I was ar- I already had Amazon Prime because for me that's much more beneficial because I ship you know I get so many things shipped mm-hmm. to me for my kids and my business and stuff that it's just totally worth it to pay the hundred bucks a year for that so I just I refused to pay for another service since I was already getting that one and since I already have a you know I already have a VPN courtesy of uh, MWD um, you know I really didn't have a need for Netflix except for these shows that everybody keeps raving about and then i finally got my hands on an account um you know legally allegedly and allegedly. uh i uh allegedly and i can uh you know now i can watch these things but I, I there's so much to catch up on i haven't gotten to it yet yeah there's so much stuff i have not been following anything and people have been asking me like have you have you seen the new um better call Saul? and i'm just like i just don't have time for that nope. stuff i'm constantly like writing material for my lnn stuff constantly trying to work out doing a podcast or working at my actual job because i'm not a celebritarian and i'm not going to be a professional lulbert i'll be a, a professional comedy writer but i won't be a professional lulbert for sure um so i just haven't had time for anything at all and i have like a bunch of movies that everybody's like you have to go see these movies like you have to see the john wick i can't believe you haven't seen the first one and i have it um legally <clears throat> allegedly and I just haven't oh, gotten too. around to just hitting the play button. I mean, I, I did watch North by Northwest, but that was like four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't seen anything since. And that movie was from I, I like 1959. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, that's funny. I just, I just, I, I still haven't seen that yet. I just finally watched. What's that other one? The uh, the one about oh, the war. Um, oh, what's that? What's that movie? Everybody. God damn it! Now I'm not going to be able to remember it. I just finally watched it. The 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 satire about the about the 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 bombs being dropped. Oh, what the oh, hell, oh, Doctor Strange Love. Doctor Strange Love. I fi- I finally just or watched that about a month I ago. How I stop worrying and love the bomb. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That one's great. Yes, I. Fi- I, I finally just watched that. I even said somebody was posting something about it. Like the next day, I'm like, "Hey, I just watched that. Now I understand what you people talk about all the time. It was great." <laughs> like, I just, I oh, haven't got now around. I get all the bodily fluids memes. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it all makes sense to me now. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, well, we're talking about being behind the times. Like I, I have like John Wick's another one of those. I still have it sitting on my on my hard drive. Haven't got around to it yet. Legally, of I course. just wa- legally, of course, of, of, of course. Yeah, I just wa- I just watched Django and uh, Django Unchained like uh, three weeks ago. <laughs> like that's how far behind I am. Yeah, I don't. I, I grab these things or people give them to me and they just sit there. They sit in a pile. Um, whether literally or figuratively, mm-hmm. and they just sit there, and I go, "Oh yeah, I should do that." And then something else comes up—a show, uh, something with my kids, um, you know, Michael wanting me to do a pirate radio station. All these things, you know, they all get in the way. Well, I don't, I don't know about uh, about that one. So I'm gonna say, Allegedly. yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to accuse Michael of doing things. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, I'll accuse him. You can't. Accuse, oh, come on. He put the, that one's up on the website. You can't really ignore okay, that okay. one. <laughs> well, I think he says if you do it in an area where it's legal, I think he's he's setting it up for a place that's completely legal. So we'll just say that. Anyways, yeah. But um, what was it? Uh, I, everybody was telling me to watch Turbo Kid, and Baron was telling me to watch Turbo Kid, and I got Turbo Kid uh, completely legally, allegedly, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I watched like half of it and I thought it was great, but I'm just like, I'm too busy right now. I got stuff to do. <laughs> and I never got around to forget watching the other half of it, but it's a good movie so far. Uh, and it's kind of vapor wavy. It's, it's, it's not completely like, um, uh, we're not vapor wave. That's wrong. Like synth wave outrun. Um, what was that movie? Um, Kung Fury. It's kind of like that, but not as much CGI, but it's kind of the same. F- oh, okay. 80s feel. Yeah. Kind of that. Yeah. I actually, I actually just watched that for the first time two days ago. <laughs> well, see, there's no excuse for that one. That one's like what, twelve minutes or something, <laughs> or thirty minutes I, or something. I know, I know, and it was one of those things I kept hearing about, and I kept saying, "Oh yeah, I'll watch it, I'll watch it." And then it was actually like I was scrolling through Netflix, and it was right in front of my face, and I was like, "Well, it's here now. I might as well watch it." And uh, it was good. So yeah, I remember maybe, maybe I like that other one. Yeah, I was like obsessed with it. Like when I when they first dropped like the the teaser stuff for it before the Indiegogo stuff, and I was like, this is gonna be the greatest thing ever. I can't wait for this Indiegogo to drop. <laughs> and then I didn't give money to it. But <laughs> <laughs> and then and then when it finally came through, I was I was just like, oh oh, I had to change my pants like three times. <laughs> it was amazing. See, yeah. I remember the teasers. And I, I, I remember watching the teachers and going, oh, this is going to be pretty cool. And then I kind of I guess I must have forgotten about it. So by the time it actually the Indiegogo went through and it actually came out, I had forgotten about it already. And I just kind of moved on. And I was like, oh, yeah, that thing I, that that sounded cool. I'll get to that. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. I'll get yeah, to exactly. That. Yeah. But uh, and it's weird because sometimes I'll, I'm like I'm one of those people where like. Like, I want to see a movie because I know that it's going to be good. Like, when The Avengers came out, like, I think it was the first one. When The Avengers came out, I was like, oh, I got to get around to seeing that. Oh, I got to get around to seeing that. And I just never did. And then when The Three Stooges dropped, I went and <laughs> I was there the opening day. <laughs> I'm, I'm weird like that. Like, so, like, I still haven't seen Ghost in the Shell, and that was the one that I was looking forward to. And it turns out, like, people are saying that's actually good. But what's the movie that I went and see that, like, a was a, a a movie of a franchise that I absolutely loathed as a kid. <laughs> it was Power Rangers. Because <laughs> oh. everybody was saying it was good. And I was like, all right, I'll go check it out. And then when, when Ghost in the Shell kind of came out, I was like, eh, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. Never did. <laughs> so, yeah. I should probably yeah. watch. And I'll probably watch that today. Knock on wood. Um, it's plastic. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just haven't had time yeah. to watch consume any media. But. I always find it funny when when I'm telling when people tell me, "Hey, have you seen this new show yet?" and I go, "No." <laughs> and they ask me the same question again as if I'm going to say, "Oh, that show. Yeah, 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 okay." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and then I do it and then I feel like an idiot for doing it. Like right after I do it, I'm like, "Oh, I just did the same thing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh yeah. you got a new co-host on your show, Seeds of Liberty. Um, yes. So what's, what's the deal with that? Cause originally it was just you and Dave fighting we, and then well, you have a guest on to listen in and then, 
Well, it, well, I mean, we had we had Danilo at the beginning, and then he right. he left the, he he left somewhere after like episode fifty or sixty or somewhere in there, um, went on sabbatical and then never came back. Uh, and I I because I was a huge Howard Stern fan for the long for a long time, so I I, I always yeah, so I, I made the you know I made the joke you know basically we were gonna treat it like the uh, like they tre- treated the Jackie chair for a while. We were just gonna put plug random people in there, and see if maybe somebody eventually fit. And yeah, it, it did turn into a lot of me and Dave just arguing and people just hanging out to listen to it and interject every once in a while, which is entertaining. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how I get my rants. You know, I get a lot of my ranting out by just dealing with Dave. And uh, I mean, I do, we do it in the, the Telegram group that we that we have, too. But it's not as much fun there because not as many people get to hear it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we started having this guy uh, who's who's actually he's become a you know a pretty good friend of mine over the past year or so, Andre Kira who is a, a former a former army uh ranger maybe i always forget where he was exactly but somewhere in the army um and uh turn turn voluntarist and basically i guess he would consider himself an ancap but he's a pretty uh level-headed guy and i always liked having conversations with him in general so we just kept having him on and enough people said that they enjoyed listening to him talk so i was like hey why don't you you know yep. if, if you if you're available every thursday night why don't you come join us so now he's there for the most part. He misses out, you know. He's got a young kid too, so every once in a while he has to bail at the last minute, uh, which I Dave doesn't understand as much as I do. Um, although I get frustrated as hell when we have, you know, we had an interview s- scheduled last week, canceled like an hour before the show. We find out they're not coming, and I'm just, I'm just like, really, seriously, people, ha- <laughs> I don't understand how people cannot get their acts together. Like, don't tell me you can, don't tell me you have time for me, and then just, <laughs> especially with the same person who's canceled on me, right? You know, repeatedly. But I blame that all on Dave because, well, it's usually the it's usually it's usually the guest he sets up, and then he, which means he's responsible for confirming and making sure they're there, and uh, those are the ones that usually go awry. Yeah. So. <laughs> but but I I like Andre. It's it's good having another voice there again. Although yeah. I I, antici- I anticipate a lot more clashes in the future depending on topics. Um. Because he does side more with Dave on a, not not the insane things Dave says, yeah. Um, but but some, but some more of the positions Dave takes that Dave may be right, but the way he gets there is horribly horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I disagree with some of those positions overall. So it's not even the the methodology. I just I like to argue, I just like to yell at Dave because of the me- methodology he uses. Because well, it's fun for me to pick on him for that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, um, Andre's it, a good dude. Um, um, they had some guy on, and it was for like basically putting Congress on the blockchain, and it was oh, I was yes. so infuriated by that episode. It wasn't a bad episode; it was good, but it was just so infuriating to hear this guy like try to rationalize this thing. <laughs> it was just like, dude, you just don't you don't get it. This is not going to solve any problems. <laughs> like <laughs> automating Congress, if anything, is going to be a or streamlining Congress is just to be a bad idea because everybody would be like, oh, we'll just dump all these social programs on the blockchain now that we don't have to <laughs> yep. yeah, work through the, the political system. And he just was <sighs> not understanding that. It was just driving me crazy. <laughs> And oh, oh! Believe me, him, Don, Donnie, and I. Donnie's a good friend of mine too. Actually, we've. Uh, it sounded like he you guys was. Were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've. I've known Donnie now for three or four years. Like we have. Right. Like he's actually probably one of the only people I will have even semi regular phone conversations with because I I don't like talking on the phone. <laughs> you want to sit down and do like a, a podcast with me, or you want to sit down and even talk on Fiend Phone or even Discord or something where I can sit on my you know in front of my computer with my headphones and my microphone. I'll do that, but don't don't make me sit on the phone, man. I hate doing that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only use my phone basically. I only use for work. But Donnie is one of those few people because he wants to have like actual conversations and like try to think stuff out and try to, you know work stuff out in his head and he, he asks for help and like you know we've always done that so and him and i have gone back and forth for months on this thing because he brought this idea to me i don't know before christmas i think was the first time i heard him mention it to me and because uh, i hadn't heard from him in a while he's like oh, i'm working on this idea i got this thing and we talked about it and every time we would talk about it we would usually end up pretty much where him and i ended up in that podcast <laughs> with me screaming at him going donnie donnie you're not fucking listening to me donnie what the fuck dude why are you why are you just making these insane statements i never said any of that what the hell man you just won't answer my question what the hell every time yeah every time <laughs> I, I, I thought his excuse or not excuse but his rationale for how the 
was it the free writer problem wasn't going to work? It's just like, oh, well, you know, what, what, what was his, his, I forget what it was, but it's one of the common lines that I hear about the free writer problem. Like, look, there's a real solution to the free writer problem, but everybody wants to kind of simple it, like boil it down to something that's completely like not the same. I can't remember what his excuse was for that. Ah, oh, it drove me crazy. Yeah, I don't even remember now, but he, yeah, well, I. <laughs> that was just that, that that was just i didn't even get that far i was still i was still at, all hopped up well like i usually am about the numbers thing where he <laughs> yeah. can't ex, where he can't explain to me what happens to these 250 million other people that are still <laughs> being taxed so this so so yeah the five million people oh you guys can pay for it yeah you and the other 250 million people yeah. you moron where, <laughs> that whole idea in a vacuum yeah I, 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 I see the, the intent, and that's great, but yeah. intent doesn't matter. Endgame. Ideas are shit. It's all about execution, and I think this is a bad execution. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You know what? You know what? You know what the, the funniest thing about what you just said is? That is almost verbatim a line that Donnie used to tell me all the time <laughs> when we when him and when him and i would either be having conversations on social media with other people like in large groups where we're going back and forth and or on trolling missions or whatever it was when it was just basically him and i on the same side of the argument and everybody else was trying to argue against us like that's where he would basically fall down on when people would cut would talk about their ideas and he's like it's all in the execution it's in the execution it's in the execution and now he wants to totally ignore the execution because it's yeah, because it's his idea. <laughs> you're, you're starting to do the cutout yeah. thing just a little bit, but you're all right now. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I, yeah. I moved. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Anyway, I don't know yeah. what that is. But yeah, like, I don't know. It, it was kind of an interesting thing. Like, I love the fights, and on top of that, it was like it was the first time where I heard you yelling at someone who wasn't Dave. <laughs> so, <other than> Dave. <laughs> and I was like, if only they could start all yelling at each other, <laughs> this will make my day. <laughs> Like no, you're Dave. You're wrong about him being wrong. <laughs> He's wrong for other reasons. How dare you? That would have made a great show. Yeah. <laughs> see, see that that's almost almost likely never going to happen. Because I mean, while. Andre is not as peaceful as Danilo was. He's still relatively even keeled, so I don't think he'll ever get very hostile. Dave tries not to. Dave tries to pretend that he's you know cool and relaxed at all times and never lets anything phase him. So he will try not to yell. I'll yell at anybody. I try not to yell at people except Dave. Um, I think I triggered him pretty bad when I was talking about what was it? It was it was a trifecta. It was the the NAP. <laughs> It was argumentation, ethics, and determinism. AJ was just not having any of it. <laughs> I think no. he ended up just basically ignoring the threat after that because it was like, yeah. Um, speaking of autism, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> <coughs> have you <laughs> have you um, have you been following what's been going on with all this weaponized autism? I mean, even beyond Shia LaBeouf, they had like this. Uh, what was it? The locker? What was his name? The lock guy? Oh, the bike it? lock guy. The bike lock guy. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, I think you maybe can put this in a little bit per to perspective for me, since I, I'm I'm ADD. At, oh, I can cuss. That's right. I'm, I'm so used to being fiends. Yeah. I'm ADD as fuck, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not familiar with the Spurg experience. <laughs> You're, you have a little little bit of it, so you can kind of give me a perspective. Yeah. How? How, yeah. how the hell did they do this? Like they keep finding Shia LaBeouf's flag. Using like weird things well, like, oh, here's a flight. Like you can see the contrails in the sky, and there's the flight patterns. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well. See, well, the Shia LaBeouf thing is one thing because my, <laughs> I, I mentioned this the other night. I think on the fiends, my buddy Andrew has this interesting theory about the whole Shia LaBeouf thing that he could actually be putting this entire thing on, um, and doing the greatest performance arts piece ever, um, which I wouldn't put past him because he's a crazy motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But just assuming that, just assuming that the uh, the four chan guys really are tracking him down, which is the most, you know, using Occam's razor is the most likely scenario at this point. <laughs> um, he, uh, they, they, it's it's. These people like this, I mean, they live on their computers. Like, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I know so – I've gotten to know some of these guys. Uh, and they're just, you know, the, the, the way their minds work and the fact – like, I mean, they work sort of like mine, I guess, but in such an advanced level. Yeah. And, and yeah, and they – and they're, and they're so – 
you know, they're so used to searching for stuff um, and, re- you know, because that's how they've, they've, they've gotten to this quote unquote enlightened position as they are already <laughs> is they've been able to research and dig and go down the rabbit holes. And yeah, you can. I mean, these days with everything being recorded in some fashion, whether it be video, audio, you know, security cameras, people's cell phones, it's not that it's really not that difficult to find this information anymore if you have the time. Yeah. And these folks seem to have nothing but time. And people <laughs> just pour all kinds of crazy stuff on the internet. So there's always stuff to reference. You can always find some like how they, I think they, did they find his cabin? I'm not sure if they, ever, I think they thought they found his cabin, but I'm not sure if they completely hundred percent found it, found it. Um, but they were looking at like the wood grains on behind him and then like some of the like photos that he was posting up on his page from inside. And then they found like pictures. They cross reference those to like pictures in like cabins for rent in Norway or wherever he's at. And then we're like finding like, oh, like here's the same chair. I think this is the same thing. I don't think they ever yep. found him there. But I, I, I don't I don't think so either. But <laughs> yeah, I know that they did find. <laughs> They they did find uh, the, what was this the locker guy the guy that hit him with, uh, hit somebody the over the head with guy. a bike lock yeah it was pretty yeah. pretty gnarly yeah and, he, he was some prof- some professor from San Francisco or something like that yeah and it was kind of weird how they found it like basically the shape of his eyes and his eyebrows um, because his the bottom half of his face was covered with a bandana and the and the girl that he was hanging out with during that event they also found. Like then they cross reference all those pictures that were kind of like, okay, maybe this is the same guy and was like, well, look, he's hanging out with the girl that looks just like this girl who was in like every other of the pictures with him in it. He's always hanging out with yeah. this girl and it was, and then they traced it back. And I guess they, I, from what I hear now, he's fired. <laughs> they, they, they got around to firing him. He was a professor oh, nice. at one of the universities. Yeah. He was a yeah. professor at one of the universities. They found out who he was. They, <laughs> they got him fired, which which is good because, you know, the guy did did do assault, but, you know, who are they really to complain anyway? Like, these are the same people, like, who will call your employer because you disagree with them about Trump and you're you're a fascist. So they'll call your boss and say, like, you're, you know, a Nazi and, you know, you deny the Holocaust. Oh, yeah. And make up stuff and get you fired. Well, exactly. They, they'll, they'll get people not only fired, but they'll try to get companies shut down yeah. over, hurt, over hurt feelings. But yeah, they'll go out and just, you know, physically attack people and, <laughs> and go. And, 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 and I'm sure this guy will have some kind of crowdfunder up at, like very shortly. <laughs> oh, I lost my job. The, the horrible, the horrible fascist took my job away from me. I was just trying to protect, you know, whatever I'm supposed to be protecting out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, I was out there uh, throwing smoke bombs at myself. <laughs> <laughs> and but what? Well, yeah, <laughs> that was I love that. <laughs> the, 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 they were throwing smoke bombs out <laughs> towards the, the the fascists. They were throwing uh, they were throwing them at like the Trump supporters, and they didn't calculate for the wind. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they didn't bother us. Uh, we'll see, and 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 that's why the four chan people are winning because they take into account, you know, flight patterns and 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 air travel and all that type <laughs> of stuff. These people, they don't even think about those things. They don't even think about the you know the way the the, the fact that the wind can change direction, not much less you know how much how fast it'll be going. Yeah, and they have and they have LARPing armor. <laughs> yeah. Well, they all do. All right, it's all of them. Yeah, those. Yeah, oh, that's just they're insane. Those people. I don't know. As, as far as as far as being able to tra- as far as as far as being able to track the the track the guy down though I mean the funny thing is is that you know yeah they're using basic facial you know facial recognition software which of all these people that are you know sitting around on their computers and whether they are or or are not actually in their mom's basement at the time of doing it um the people like that you know they basically grew up you know again like i understand this mentality to a certain extent i just never took it that far because these are the same type of people that were watching like csi and all that stuff when the shows came out these are these ideas are so great and like and basically 
all of those things that exist in those shows, like they exist out there, not just for the police, like anything the law enforcement has, hackers and, yeah. and people of that nature have and and better because that's the whole reason that this, that the government is constantly trying to thwart them is because they're always one step ahead. So all this stuff exists. It's just like I said, the, the biggest thing about it is is the time consumption and the type of people that are out there hunting this stuff down now have some of the most time <laughs> available yeah it's you like know. so so who will build the roads this is a who will build the roads questions like who who will catch the really bad people 4chan next question yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's lots there's kind of lots of groups that i mean there have always been kind of groups online who were going out and trying to like track down pedophiles that's one uh granted they always call the cops uh, but you know what are they what are they supposed to do um what was that show? Uh, to catch a pedophile. There's like a, a group. I can't remember the name of the group is. To catch a predator. Yeah. No, but yeah, but there was, but the group that they always worked with on the show. I can't remember it. And I'm gonna get some angry commenter like, "It was this, you idiot cat." Oh. And so uh, they always work with this this organization. And what they usually do is they hang out in areas where, you know, like young kids hang out, and they look for people who are like predators. And then, they, you know, they'll, they'll contact them and try to get like lure them in with sex and then call the cops on them. Um, mm. You know, it's, it wouldn't be too much different if they had to rely on some other security company, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, that's that's who will catch, you know. The, and besides, law enforcement doesn't do a really good job like looking for people like that. They usually don't do a lot of sting work. They're usually doing pulling people over and hoping that they catch a murderer. Like, hope, hopefully this guy has a bloody glove in his car or something. That's how they usually catch yeah. most people. You know, it's traffic stops. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, they don't do. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't investigate crimes. <laughs> that takes too much work. And, unless it's too. Unless it's really hot trial. Like if it's. Oh, if, pro, high profile. Yeah, stuff, high profile sure. stuff. Celebrities, yeah. uh, politicians. You know, any anybody like that, of course. Any anybody that not only will people care about something of being done about it but have the money to back it oh of course yeah. they'll they'll snap their fingers for that stuff yeah i mean i, I so. had i had a i had someone steal my car and there was like beer bottles in the back seat like clear beer bottles and you could see fingerprints on them and i was like you know all you have to do is just dust this thing and cross-reference the print i'm sure you can find someone that, no no case is over they weren't going to investigate it any further. They said basically, if they if they caught uh, caught one, they think might have been the one that stole my car. Then they let me know, and you know, <laughs> that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so yeah. basically, I was just out of a yeah. car. Yeah, yeah. They don't care. Well, yeah, because when it comes to stuff like that, then all of a sudden they're very, uh, you know, they're very cost efficient with their money. Oh no, we can't afford that. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, it's yeah. like it's like no, you know how much that costs. We can't do that for every case. But yeah, but it's either, or or the other thing, not only just like the celebrities, but the, the other thing I just just clicked in my mind is also like in in positions where like the DA or the uh, the sheriff or whatever is running for re reelection, you know, then that's when they care about certain cases that other people would care about because it's like, oh, we're going to garner sympathy. Oh yes, oh we're going to look like the really we're going to look like the really really good guys. Okay, we need a reelection campaign. Let's yeah. go. This really sad case of this little little girl dying, yeah, and being yep. raped. Like we we can get reelected on on this. Let's just try to find exactly a on this one. Yeah, exactly. All it turns out it was a parents. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. But any any other rape case or you know, I mean, okay. Granted, usually with when it comes to kids, they tend to be a little more. Yeah, because that's a, that's the definition of a high profile. Because they never really happen. I mean, well, they do, but they're really extremely rare. So when it does happen, they have they can have the the luxury of dumping all kinds of money every single time something like this happens, or most of the time when this happens, because it's yep. such a rare occurrence. Because people who people who want to rape usually rape people who are like post adolescent at least, <laughs> you know. Usually, yeah. yeah. Usually. So yeah, but you know, in the future, who who will who will <laughs> who will stop the pedophiles? Uh, 4chan. <laughs> Four chan. <laughs> <laughs> who will stop sex trafficking? Tony Styles. Wait, no, uh, that didn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, which, by the oh, way, God. fuck all. Is he these still around? Guys. No, he 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 had to take a break from social media for a while, and then all of a sudden, like his his website for. Um, Freedom arrows just disappeared. It's all gone. The website's down. Um, 
And I started contacting like some of these like celebritarians, and I won't mention who. I probably should mention them just just to you know just to call them out. Um, Do it. Yeah. Do it. Okay, Name Julie Borowski. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Borowski. <laughs> fuck her. Um, she she was oh, promoting I can't this. Stand her. And the and I initially contacted her, and you're being quiet again. I don't know what happened. Um, I, I contacted her like right after that happened. I was like, "This is a this is a scam. Do not give money to this. Don't do it." And she friended me on Twitter or followed me on Twitter so that she can DM me. And uh, she was like, "Do you have any proof for this?" And then like I gathered a bunch of stuff. I know Steve Miller Miller sent me, and I provided it. Radio silence. Then after all the stuff like went down and they didn't release their their financials like they promised they were going to do i was like where's you know what happened radio silence again and then i contacted her i was like hey look the website's down everything's down tony's nowhere to be found every he took the money and ran uh what's going on and she was like i have no involvement in this i was like i mean besides the fact that you were promoting this thing (laughs) to your followers and everybody went and listened to you and gave money to this thing yeah uh yeah you're quiet again you're quiet you're, you're, I don't what? know what happened, but you're quiet. Hold on. All right. Fixed everything. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> it, I don't know if it was okay. my fault the entire time, every time that happened to you. But anyways, uh, well, so yeah. Mo- mo- momentary ones might be my fault. Like okay. I said, sometimes my, my headphone cord, for some reason, if I tap it, it, like, it, it cuts me out momentarily. But anyway. Anyway. So yeah, like uh, all these people, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of everybody going around saying, "Oh, in a free society, you know, if if someone does something bad and you know they don't pay, we'll just ostracize them." And it's like, we're not doing that now. I mean, we have people who go on <laughs> podcasts who are like known fraudsters, and like, and not like, "Oh, he took like ten bucks from me running a fake charity," like Tony Styles. No, it was like. <laughs> they stole like like millions of dollars, people's whole life savings for like fraudulent passports and and land in Chile that they didn't have water rights to, and then Berwick, yeah, <coughs> and then it's just like, <laughs> oh, okay, well I'll just show, I'll be on Anarchast tomorrow, <laughs> like you know, what's oh, the problem yeah. here? And you know, and, and then they'll turn well, around and say, oh yeah, but if something bad happens in a free society, we'll just ostracize them out of you know out of the community. You're not doing it now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, see now. Well, there's a whole bunch to unpack there. Um, yeah, there is a lot to unpack, I I, but I mean, like, just that's. I mean, there's lots of reasons oh, no, no. why, like, they could be, you know, like uh, excommunicated from society, but it wouldn't be through ostracization at all. Because anytime someone does something fraud in anybody's little tribe, the tribe will come together and and defend them blindly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, well, I, I was just gonna say, well, because first of all, I, I can't. Like, we started this with with Styles and Browski. I can't stand either of them anyway. I met <laughs> I met both of them. And I met both of them, and they both rubbed me the wrong way when, yeah. when I met them. And I was just like, oh, get the hell away from me. Uh, <laughs> and the ostracization thing, like, I mean, I'm somebody who used to espouse, you know, espouse that all the time. And oh, sure, without really thinking about it much. Well, yeah, that's the way. That's the way it's gonna work. And I still think it it has its place to a certain extent. But for me, it's funny because that's one of those things that I think a lot of people just run around who are kind of like the idiots that only know about this crap in theory. They don't mm. actually they, not only not only have they not put it into practice, they haven't even thought about putting it into practice. Yeah. Every, everything sounds great on paper, which I actually I, I, I actually yelled this at Dave um, in a in a Telegram chat we were having. Like it was a, it was a was you know, it group very chat recently? Like Forty people in there. Oh, yes. <laughs> But I, I yelled me? this. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I no. But it was about. It was a. It, it was something surrounding this whole idea of just this absolutism about certain things and like just turning this blind eye to stuff. And I just started screaming about this. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, and the and the funny thing is, I'm like. You guys are all about these theories. You know what that boils down to? You've got some great ideas on paper. Yeah. You know who you say that about all that all the time? The fucking communists that you supposedly <laughs> hate so much and we have to eradicate. You're no different than them, you fucking moron. <laughs> and he couldn't, he basically tried to change the subject, you know, kind of like he did with you, you know, yeah. <laughs> where it was just like, what? You didn't just say that to me. That didn't happen. <laughs> I didn't know you were a communist. Press B. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's not an argument. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, but yeah, so most of these people they they it's it does sound great and it can work if people think that way, but you're right. People don't make use of it now because 
I don't know. Could that change though? Because might it just be that people are even more tribalist in that regard yeah, because I think... the state's there and they have to protect against yeah. that as well as protecting it? I don't know. I don't know, but at the it's same possible. time, I mean, it's entirely possible for someone like, uh, well, maybe not Tony Styles. I, I think he's, he probably is legitimate, at least in his ideology. But, you know, he's someone like someone like <laughs> Berwick, it's entirely possible that he's just not a, a, a libertarian or anarchist of any stripe. And he's just like, oh, here's a community I can scam and they won't call the cops. It's entirely possible that there's people out there like that. You know, Arcade City might yeah. be like that. Who knows? You know, because... It, you know, it's 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 really great. I mean, like if uh, I'm uh, here, here's my message to scammers. OK, if you're looking to scam someone uh, 409, whatever you want to do, uh, there's a great, wonderful group of people called libertarians. Uh, if you scam them out of thousands of dollars, the worst they'll do to you is they'll put out a video uh, <laughs> about how terrible you <laughs> calling are, calling you names, <laughs> calling you calling you names and how you were defrauded by them. But don't worry, everybody who likes you still and is still like being being dupes in your scam will blindly defend you for them. <laughs> so come on down and get your fill because there's 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 plenty of dupes waiting. All you have to do is just say nap. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's, what it's it's it is it's a ripe environment to take advantage of, sure. Yeah. And it is very tribal. It's, it's it, there, there is a collective mentality. It's like, well, this person's an anarchist, and I hear that that kind of stuff all the time. It's like, well, I know this service is going to be good because the guy that runs it's an anarchist, you know. And even from people who I have a lot of respect for who don't kind of buy into this mentality, they'll still kind of slip into that, like Brian Sovereign, which I really, I really do like Brian. But uh, like occasionally he'd be like, "Yo, this is a great service," you know. It's ran by an anarchist. It's like, yeah, well, so was Gulf Gulf Chile, you know. <laughs> yeah. Not, 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 not a, not a guarantee. Yeah. Uh. Not a guarantee. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's a good thing to look out for. Like, Oh, look, somebody's being ran by an anarchist. Like, it's just something I should take seriously, but I, sh but not something that, you know, I should like take as an argument for why this might be a good thing. Cause arcade city was also ran by an anarchist too. So yeah, yeah it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's a bonus, not the main selling point. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I, I'm an anarchist. I run a business. Most of my clients don't even know that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I don't know. I don't, just people, people are really tribal. It's like, well, you know, the state's terrible and anybody who fights the state I'm, I'm with. Well, and... yeah, but oh, well, an alarm. what nice. in God's name? <laughs> that, that was an alarm that reminds me every morning to get home and clean my kitty litter box. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Um, it's a good thing to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I keep it, and I don't keep it. Clean. I'm, I'm a slob. But anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, so what else? Um, should we get into free will and determinism and all that stuff? <laughs> and what happened with oh, Dave? Or should, is that could, is that but... Patreon on only content? <laughs> 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 I think I already kind of covered a little well, bit of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I was I, I, I was I was gonna say I, I mean I have no problem scaring Dave anywhere. Although I just I just did a podcast I did a Patreon podcast of my own where I ripped into him and Danilo pretty even worse than I normally do. <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't really ripping on Dave uh, in in that. No, thing. you were just yeah. you were just you were just pointing it. Oh. I was using an it's, example it, for something. For something. Yeah. <laughs> it it is what it is. We've we've already beaten up on him. We've already beaten up on him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's well, I, I was going to say about the, well, I, well, I was just going to say about the, you know, the whole, you know, business or that, you know, somebody's an anarchist, we should support him thing. That's how, that's how this whole Trump kiss thing started. That's how we end. That's how we, that's how, that's how the community ended up with a lot of these idiots in the first can, place. I, I'm okay with mouse pocketing on my show. Right. This is, this is not yeah. radio. <laughs> it's, I know it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a, it's a reflexive thing for myself. I it's, just automatically catch it's, myself. It's like one of those, uh, one of those. The libertarians against humanity, which is clearly an illegal thing to do because it's it's infringing copy. The oh copyright. Jesus, that's so ridiculous. Uh, we should talk about that in a second. But yeah, there was yeah. A, there was a card in there that said like you know constantly double thinking everything you're about to say, so not say to say we to imply collectivism or something. Yeah, <laughs> along those lines. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm I'm but, okay with that. But go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. I know. I just wanted to make sure I interrupted. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and now I think I lost where I was going with that. Damn it! Um, Businesses, uh, tribal. Oh no, that's oh that's yeah. oh oh yeah. That's how that's how that's how we ended up with these people. There's so many 
and there was so many individuals that I saw in the past like year or so that were so desperate to like, you know, with the, oh, here's our chance, you know, even if we don't want to do the political thing, like we have to, we have to bring more people, you know, it's constantly got to bring more people in, mm-hmm. bring more people in. And just anybody makes an even close to libertarian stance libertarians and anarchists want to jump on these people and claim them that's how like that idiot brett brett sanders who was the guy who who did the video of paying his parking ticket or something in pennies in texas last year or uh there's been a few of those. Last is, that, year. is that another one okay. yeah okay well, he he became he became really big news in the in like the libertarian anarchist circles. At least most of the ones that I I travel in, like he just his name was everywhere. His video was everywhere. Everybody was, oh, this is so great. This is so great. We got to talk to this guy. We got to get this guy on our podcast. And he's like a hardcore nationalist, and he really never said anything different. But people just kind of like kind of like the Rorschach thing where people just kept like sticking whatever they wanted to on them. They're just like, Oh yeah, he's going to be one of us. And there was a bunch of these people. And then when, when, you know, it became apparent that Trump, you know, when Trump was going to be the nominee and he started supporting Trump hardcore, all these other idiots started going, Oh, well, you know what? Maybe he's right. This does sound like a good idea. So yeah, I, I blame, I blame, I blame these idiots (laughs) for the ruination. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that, that all of that had to do also with, um, like, I don't know. It's just kind of like, it, like now that like I did a podcast like um, on my Patreon thing, which, by the way, I have the RSS feed working now. So if you go there, you can actually have your own little RSS feed. And so that way you keep updated. You don't have to keep going to the Patreon to listen to this stuff. I did not know. I didn't know that you had to set that. I thought that was automatic until, until I was hanging out with Jeff the other night. He was like, you know, I, it sucks listening to those things because I can't get it on. I was like, really? Oh, crap. I have to enable it. Damn it. <laughs> Anyways. um. <laughs> I forgot what was going with that. Oh no, no, the SJW thing. That is not. This is not a new phenomenon. This is really not a new phenomenon. The only difference is, is like now YouTube is not YouTube and all these platforms. They're so democratized now because the technology is so easy to operate that now they can they have a platform. They still existed. They still had sway. They still had protests. They still did all that crazy crap, but no one paid attention to it because it was like, oh well, Bush is president. Who cares? You know, <laughs> and, you know, I remember there was a big thing about Kid Rock. He was like, I'm done doing college campuses now because they're way too politically correct. And this was like in the like the mid aughts. You know, this was not like the 90s with Clinton and the political correct stuff, you know, th- or during Obama and, you know, the SJW thing. This was like Bush <laughs> while Bush was still president. Yeah. I mean, they, they always existed. They've always been around. They, they've always been kind of fringe. It's just now that you, you can't ignore them because they're on youtube and a a bunch of people have made a great living uh posting these videos on youtube with a little cartoon avatar and they're always wearing a fucking suit by the way they're all of them are wearing a suit like all these like youtube anti-sjw's they're always like oh it's a funny head on a person on a man on wearing a suit and then they're always like (laughs) oh look at this crazy lady named milo who thinks she's like some weird half man half person (laughs) you know wearing a tutu (laughs) yeah you know, like this, yeah. this is where the left is going. And it's like that's where the left's always been. <laughs> you know, it's, they've always been there. They just haven't been pandering to them because they haven't had a spotlight on them. But yeah. Yeah. Well, same could be same could be said about the other the other side of it. Yeah. Yeah. They they they've been, they they've been there. T- well, I mean, especially I mean, you talk about the SJWs, especially with the the alt right. I mean, you were one of the ones who actually kind of tipped me off to this when I when I started looking more into it. That it was like, no, this isn't a new phenomenon. These idiots have been around for a while. They just have a bigger platform now because they're they more think, people know it. You know, I think once, they're actually growing. More... Though. No, I, no, I think the well, alt right oh, yeah. is growing. Yeah, like like the whole. Oh no, it is. But they've been not a... national socialist movement, but still white nationalist kind of movement. That's that's a wholly new thing, really. It's it's yeah. it's the other white now it's it's the other white so- socialist movement. Yeah, I mean, it was just basically socialist. Jared. <laughs> Taylor. It was Jared Taylor going on on was it Donahue, and then no one cared. <laughs> you know, everybody they were just like a laughing stock, and that was it. But now we had like Menchus Molebug who kind of started the whole neo reactionary thing, and I was talking about this like I think this is going to be a thing. Like <laughs> that's what I was oh, no, the- on. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm not saying it won't be. I'm just saying they, they've been around a lot longer than yeah, most. Yeah. Like the idea, the, the ideas have been there. Just they didn't have as much of a. I mean, I'm, I'm sure oh, they yeah, are sure, growing. Sure. Yeah. 
they're de- they're definitely growing because now there's I mean look at all the idiots that attach themselves attach their names to it because yeah. they didn't understand what it actually was and backed off subsequently. <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave Dave's actually one of those people originally. Oh, he was. <laughs> He was he was never as bad as as his um his horrible uh his his horrible wannabe rapper friend um <laughs> Jeff Jeff Howe How was oh. no no <laughs> the other one <laughs> uh, <laughs> he 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 was never as bad as some of these some of some of these crazy bastards but he was he was totally fine with the were the alt were all alt right now and and taking it as this umbrella term that actually didn't have any real definition like he was quite okay with that explanation of it I'm like and I kept trying to I kept yelling at him I'm like Dave Dave Actually, I think there's multiple episodes of my show where I'm yelling at him about the alt right go going, dude. There's a there's a fu- there's a fucking definition, Dave. <laughs> there is a definition. There's, it's not just this nebulous term that you can just go. Ah, everybody's the alt right now. People are just no. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. On a side note, by the way, uh, how many Jared Howes does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know. I don't know either. I'm blocked. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> 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 I am still not to this day actually surprised. Um, actually, I although I, I just, preemptively I blocked him. him. Yeah, I preemptively oh. blocked him. Like I had a discussion with him and some other dude, and his friend blocked me, and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna block him just because I know that would probably be Dan." Is. No, it was uh, Dan. Something started Daniel, with him. Daniel. Oh, I was. I thought. I thought it was Daniel Quillen and the guy. Yeah, yeah, I think that was him. Part. Yeah, I think that was him. Who, who, who's the saddest? Who's the saddest of that bunch for me? Because he's a he was a part not like all of them were friends of mine. Dan's actually like I hung out with him at, at multiple festivals. He stayed at my house. He hung out and played with my kids. <laughs> like he was a very like we talked regularly. He was a very good friend of mine. And when all this started happening, <laughs> and uh, he like pretty much turned against me. I'm like, dude, this is fucked up, man. You you stayed on my. I gave you my bed. It wasn't even like you stayed on my couch. I let you have my bed. I stayed on the couch while you were here. But you disagree with Molyneux, so the <laughs> <de> food. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, and I was one of them. I was one of those hardcore Molly bots with them. <laughs> it was it was it was it was actually my introduction to you and Michael that finally got me to pause and step back for a while and go, oh wait a minute, I really do sound like a fucking douche. <laughs> <laughs> we all been there. Though. I got to rethink we were some all stuff. <laughs> we were all we we all kind of were on the Molly train. I think every, almost every every anarchist I know was on the Molly train for at least a little bit, except for Matt. Matt Pritchard was has always been like. He was the one that kind of convinced me, like, okay, yeah, there's something wrong with Molyneux. <laughs> he was, like, one of the people that I was listening to. He was like, no, Molyneux's an idiot. Don't <laughs> don't pay attention to him. And then I was like, okay, is he really an idiot? And then I started kind of listening, like, are you really an idiot? And then once you have that kind of mentality with Molyneux, like, I'm, I'm going to make sure that you're not an idiot. And I'm going to listen to everything that you say. Then you start noticing, like, he makes, like, these huge logical fallacies, like, constantly. And then, it's, and like he'll make a like a fallacy, and then someone will make that same exact fallacy like two minutes later, and he'll be like, "That's not an argument," and it's like, "But you just kind of made a very similar argument like three seconds ago." <laughs> but you, uh, if you, put if, it, if but you, you mention put it, that, you yeah, get you, blocked. Yeah, you, you put it, you put it in the form of a joke, and then people just kind of ignore it. But but people kind of internalize it as an argument. It's really weird to listen to Mullen you kind of dance around that stuff. But yeah. Um, we were all kind of there. Oh, we man. all we were all kind of the oh, the non-aggression principle is the only axiomatic philosophy that makes any sense. <laughs> we all were there. <laughs> we were all there. We were all there. Yeah, so don't feel bad. Yeah. I, I, there was some guy. There was some guy on YouTube. I think his name was Vol Garrett. Um, and originally, I thought his name was Garrett. And I was like, you probably should change that name on YouTube because there's another Garrett on YouTube who's like a crazy SJW. Uh, but he did so good. But he was like saying like yeah like you know. You know, I was really stupid, and I can't believe that I, you know, got into volunteerism for the wrong reason. I stayed for the right ones, and I was like, "No, man, we all kind of did dumb things." You know, I was a, I was a green for fuck's sake. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we all, we're all dumb, young, dumb, and full of calm at one point, right? We all said stupid yes. shit, yeah. yeah. But anyways, kind of like argumentation ethics. You know, we all we all been down that path. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> but it's Yeah. Hey now. 
Argumentation ethics are bulletproof, Jim. You know yeah. that. You, you can't. You can't do any. To you deny can't. it is to prove it right. <laughs> exactly. I can't stand those it arguments. Isn't. They're so. It's so. It's such a parlor trick. <laughs> it really per, per, is. Per, performative contradiction, Jim. Yeah, it's a performative contradiction. I have. But you know what's a performative contradiction is being in a deterministic universe while convincing someone that the world is uh, deterministic. (laughs) It's simultaneously true and a performative contradiction, so it's not a proof. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love that example because it drives people nuts. (laughs) It makes them say things like, press B. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, Dave. I'm kidding. <laughs> Press B. You're wrong, but I, I'm I'm still messing with you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what else? What else has been going on? Was it? There's something else I wanted. I think it was it. Uh, Unless you wanted to talk about something. <laughs> no, I think the only other thing you said was the Tom Woods thing. But oh yeah. Oh, speaking of Trump, <laughs> so there was an, <laughs> there was an episode uh, where. So, yeah, Walter Block originally started the the Libertarians for Trump, and he was like, well, you know, Trump has the best foreign policy uh, of anyone running, <laughs> so I think that we should all kind of band, you know, band around him, and if you're in a state uh, where the outcome is one, you know, pretty determined, uh, then you should vote for Gary Johnson. Uh, but if, you know, if, if your vote can change the course of an election, uh, then you should vote for Trump. Uh, because he'll he'll keep us out of all these crazy things in the, in the Middle East. And um, so after, <laughs> after the whole thing with Syria happened, <laughs> he came on there and he was like, so I'm here sweating bullets, uh, eating crow. <laughs> I was wrong. You know, but, but you know, ex ante, I was right. Uh, and post ante, I was wrong. I'm terrified. Oh. <laughs> Is that too good? I'm sorry. <laughs> that 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 okay. that was pretty good. Okay. <laughs> is, oh. He's oh, he drives me insane. That guy. He, <laughs> the, I like the, him as much like, as I hate him, though. <laughs> I, I yeah. I mean, he 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 done like Walter Block has obviously done like some amazing work, but yeah. I mean. On the other hand, every time I hear him, especially every time I hear uh, Tom Woods talk about him and mention the over 500 peer reviewed articles that he's written, I keep I can't help but th- like be reminded of, of a vision uh, I kind of have. And I hate to keep bringing it back to this, but of Dave, who everybody always everybody says is a great idea, man, because he comes up with a lot of these great ideas. But it's because he fires them off nonstop. So it's like eventually, you know, statistically, he's bound to come up with one eventually <laughs> because he just <laughs> fires off a million and one ideas a minute. Kind of like Alex shows so how not... he predicts things because he's constantly yes. making predictions. Pre- but you forget all the ones where he's like. Guys, next week, the United States government's going to open up these FEMA camps and throw everybody in there and feed them fluoride and make all the frogs gay. Exactly. And then it doesn't happen. But when he kind of sounds like he predicted 9-11, it's like, whoa, he he got one. But it's like, well, what about the 3,000 others that he made like in the week before? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes sometimes that's how I think about Walter Block, especially when I hear Tom Woods mention it. I'm like, yeah, he did some great stuff, but... He tries to rationalize so much fucking shit. I mean, look how we did it in that show. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, 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 like, I was like, what What are you talking about? Yeah, I was wrong. But still, in this sense, I was right. And no, dude, <laughs> stop. Just stop. You're still rationalizing. Just fucking stop. Just admit well, you were we wrong. Got Gorshik. We got Gorshik and the, the transgenders out of the bathroom. Uh, I think that's fantastic. <laughs> I will say that it's probably the two good things that they come out of Trump so far. And I, yeah. I think it's probably that's about it. <laughs> but no, well, except no, the, the transgender, the bathroom thing. Like, look, I don't care if I think I think it should be up to whoever, whatever business owns the bathrooms. If they want to let people in like that, go ahead. If they don't go ahead. And if you don't like it, don't shop there. If you do like it, go shop there. Like That's I think I think that's the best solution that we keep the government out. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was. Well, no, that is the well, yeah. I, I agree. That is the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was I was just gonna say that's the f- I keep forgetting the guy's name that he was that he that he had the debate with the first time that they were talking to again. But the, the, yeah, Block said that I yeah that's a great thing. And then as soon as the guy said, well, that's the one thing I agree with, then he was so mad that that was the only thing he agreed with. Yeah. 
Like, what do you and mean? That's so great. There was lots of other things he did. We can't, we can't ignore those. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but all the bad things he did was way worse, though. So who cares? Yeah. <laughs> which is which? Which was my argument against Trump the entire time when when, I, when all these idiots kept saying, like, not, if, even if they weren't going to actually vote for Trump, all the people that were basically trying to push others into voting for yeah. Trump, like Block was, you know, if you're going to vote, then go ahead. Yeah, okay, I get it. You're you may not vote yourself. Although I think actually Block, if I remember correctly, yeah, Block I think he does, does vote. actually vote. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's part he's part um, of the whole Rothbard group and the Rothbard, you know, kind of circle, Lou and Tom Woods. They they're they're not like they're not anti vote. It's it's so funny to see like like hardcore ANCAPs say like like you know, true ANCAPs don't do it. It's like but every single podcaster you listen to <laughs> and every book that you read are usually from people who advocate for voting. But go ahead, man. Well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well that's that's why that whole well, and, that, and that's the only people that most of those guys can quote, which is why I just laugh at them now. And, you know, yeah, I, I'm I, I'm a commie these days, too, apparently, because, uh, you know, Dave hasn't actually called me one yet, but everybody, everybody else in his circles <laughs> has. They've all they've all they've all denounced me as a leftist or a commie. And I'm just like, I'm I think I'm pretty much one of the only consistent ones out of you fuckers, because I haven't really changed much. <laughs> yeah, I've evolved. You just don't things. agree with me anymore. Yeah, well, no, I've evolved on certain things, but I on, on on other stuff they've they they shifted, and you know, I'm just like, no, no, I, I still don't want to play the political games. Thanks. Yeah, like when when I started out as an ANCAP, I was a napper, and then I started kind of sliding over to utilitarian stuff, and then I started getting into. In fact, when I started this show, I was a nihilist. I was a I was a moral nihilist, and now I'm kind of more like a more um, an ethical egoist. I, I'm I'm not on board with a lot of the politics stuff because I'm kind of going through the book now, and there's a lot of stuff that I don't agree with, like for his political prescriptions. But uh, his kind of view on ethics, like it's pretty on point. I think it's a lot more coherent than um, than uh, Rand, which Rand kind of got her ideas from. It was from Sterner, um, Max Sterner. Yeah, yeah. see, Stern, Stern, Sterner's Sterner's actually on my list of people to read next, because mm-hmm. uh, I've I've heard you talk about him a lot, and I know James Weeks is uh, is a big fan of his. Yeah. Um, I I've taken to use it like uh, the little bit that I do know. I've taken to been using some of the terminology <laughs> just to taunt um, the ANCAPs and Dave. <laughs> The um, nap is pretty spooky, though. <laughs> it, 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 it is. And he gets so like he. Made, <laughs> like he, like people, pe- people like him. They they make those rant, they make those posts on social media all the time about the nap, you know how it's an absolute and stuff. And now I just like where I used to just ignore him. Now I actually go there and I I put stuff like somebody said he he. I think it was actually Dave was complaining about something about you know probably was you saying saying the nap was a spook and I'm like but the nap is a spook yeah. <laughs> I just got all this. I get I just get all this hate from everybody. I actually I actually changed the name of our our, our Telegram group to that the other day because he was trying to argue about that. <laughs> I, I was just I was just like I was just like everything about you and your ideology is a fucking spook, you idiot. No, shut up. <laughs> it's pretty spooky, but yeah, like um, but when you when you read like Max, you, you start to like he he makes it clear like you know there you can have preferences that are you know that are beneficial you know that are spooks not all spooks are bad it's just um just to to to, to say something is real because it's uh, you know it or, uh, something is true because it like it's it logically makes sense but i was like no that's all spooky <laughs> you know we're trying to like say like things are true ex ante um or a priori and stuff like that that's when you can start getting into really spooky things really spooky things well, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and see, and I actually stumbled onto that type of thinking a while back, you know, talking about evolving ideas without without even reading all that and getting into that, because mm. we started getting Sterner into these. Com- I started getting, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I started getting, I started getting into these conversations with people about just existence in general and like the whole idea of what actually exists. If you, you know, when you talk about all those type of levels and I was just like. You know, I walked away with the with like the arguments that people used to give for property rights and self ownership and all that stuff, and I was just like, "Yeah, they're great ideas, but they don't really exist." So, like, why are you guys all like, like, why are you trying like, trying to prove like why like now I understand why the nihilists that I know and hang and are friends with because you know they're you know they're cool people like we we share a lot of other common interests and even when I was more of like a very hardcore more of an objective objectivist i don't think i was ever a full objectivist but i guess i was you know never I was go a full mob, objectivist. I, 
I, I was a Molly bot, so I was oh, okay. I was I was that I was that version of it, you know. The, I tried uh, to get in. Is, UPB is life, you know that type of thing. Yeah, I tried um, to get into UPB, and that lasted about a month. And I was like, this is this is stupid. <laughs> this is really stupid. And so there was a lot of people who good people who were like asking really good questions about UPB. They kind of snapped me out of it. But go ahead, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted yeah, to, yeah. I just wanted to make sure I interrupted. Interrupted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, again, now I, now I forgot where I was going with that, but, oh, yeah, uh, you can't do that with, uh, I was just, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I exactly. No, I would, no, I was saying I, I, I evolved my thinking on it by saying, yeah, all these ideas, even like, you know, there's all, all, all the stuff is like, yeah, they're, they're, they're ideas. They're great. They're useful. And that's actually the, the that's how the, uh, our, that's the way I looked at it, it, which I guess I am becoming more utilitarian without <laughs> even realizing it. I'm just like, yeah, they're, they're great ideas. They're useful. But you guys are arguing like they have to exist in like the solid form. And now I understand why these nihilists make fun of you and say, sure, can you can you can you point to the uh, to, to, to the to the nap particle? Where is it? Yeah. You know, can, can I touch it? You know, like I now I understand why they make fun of you like that because it, you know that's that's how you that's kind of how you're looking at it. It's like no man, just chill. You can't know this shit. <laughs> stop, just stop. Have you been hanging out with the um with the uh, the the was it wh- who is that guy? Uh, PC like the whole uh, PC nihilism thing that was on Facebook for a while. There was a guy named like Pika Chan. And he started like this kind of PC nihilism where it's like it's like nihilism on steroids. And there's another guy who kind of promotes it now, which is kind of uh, like John Galt. <laughs> he goes by the name John Galt on Facebook. Yeah. Have you been hanging out with those people? Because those people no, sound, no. sound like you're talking to those people, <laughs> those nihilists. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. So, I, yeah. I know. I know some. Of, I know some of them. I don't know if they're actually in that group, but a bunch of the guys that run similar groups like that. Uh, that I've met over the years that I actually got to hang out with up at uh, when I went to Pork Fest last year. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, 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 that's those type of guys. So, yeah, they, they probably run in the same circles. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, oh. Pika Chan. Rest in peace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man. But like I said, my, my ideas, I guess, started naturally evolving that way anyway. So, yeah, I'll, I'll start reading Starter at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the it's a fully expanded mind. <laughs> the, on the fully expanded mind, the small one is uh, statism. The medium one is nap. Yeah. Yeah, man. Chicago. Well, come on, man. Step up from that. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago but, facts but, for the win. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't gone that far yet. Get on my level, bro. I All still, right. Uh... <laughs> Do you yeah. got anything you want to pimp or talk about? <laughs> nah. 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 You, know, you can. Yeah. Nah. You know. Nah. You, you, you hear me on the fiends. You, 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 you hear me on the fiends. You, you, can, fi- you, can, find my, you can find my crappy website at the, the, the seedsofliberty.com. You really need to fix uh, that, for all man. My stuff. <laughs> Just throw a WordPress had, on it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I, I could, if I actually wanted to take the time, I could do it at this point, but. I'm leaving that solely on Dave just because it, it make it gives me another opportunity to, to yell at him about stuff regularly because <laughs> this was his responsibility. And he, he told me he had it covered multiple times. Um, and he had multiple people working on this project at different points who were supposed to be doing this for us. And uh, it just never materializes and he never has an answer for me. So I'm just like, dude, this is on you. So like I've even said it on multiple podcasts at the end. I'm like, I'd make fun of the website directly to, to poke fun or, to make fun of him. I will um, say that for someone to have that website up while espousing the non-aggression principle is a performative contradiction. Because that, <laughs> that website is a violation of the NAP. And I think we'll wrap it up there. So I'll talk to you later, uh, man. I'm just... <laughs> are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that are you tired of elitists like barack obama and al gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in in this country and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge.
Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try Fiend Phone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve Fiend Phone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. Fiend Phone. I never knew remote audio could be this good. <laughs> 